All right. Uh, my name is Dylan Hamilton, and I my local institution is the College of Worcester down near Akron, Ohio. Um, and my mentor is uh, Dr. Nala Padel, uh, who also is very kind. <laughs> and um, I'm working with uh, Dr. Jan's group over in R1. Um, and so I've been working on uh, the atomic layer deposition of tin oxide. Um, so over here on our right, we have our classic anatomy of a thin film solar cell. Um, we have our glass super straight, if we're growing it from the top. Um, we have our transparent conducting oxide that serves as a front contact. Um, we have our highly resistant transparent buffer layer, our n-type semiconductor, our p-type semiconductor, and then our back contact. Um, and so we currently receive glass coated um, already with these two first layers, the transparent conducting oxide and the highly resistive transparent. Uh, the buffer layer. Um, and so the question is, um, can we grow our own HRT and then by tuning it to our needs, um, get a boost in efficiency? Um, so our goal is to deposit our tin oxide as our HRT layer. Um, and we, we need a buffer layer uh, because it, it reduces shunting um, from, from the copper <coughs> diffusing towards the uh, transparent conducting oxide. Um, and once we de decrease the shunting through our barrier or our buffer layer, um, we can then uh, decrease the thickness of our cadmium sulfide, um, which allows light to then penetrate further into our absorbing layer, our p-type semiconductor. Um, so then with more light hitting our um, cadmium telluride, um, we can get uh, a boost in efficiency that way. Um, so here's a quick overview of um, atomic layer deposition, which is how we're depositing this film. And um, there's a few key words down here. It's a cyclic process of the sequential self-limiting reactions. Uh, self-limiting is really the big key word. Um, so the, the precursors that we use are such a way that once they've reacted on all available sites, uh, there's no mechanism for them to react further. Um, so that way they're, they're self-limiting. So as we can see, we have our substrate here. We pump in a precursor. It reacts at all the sites it can, and then it can't react any further. We pump it out. Uh, we pump in our second precursor. Reacts at all the sites it can, can't react anymore. We pump it out and we repeat this, uh, growing up layer by layer, angstrom by angstrom. Um, and so uh, because of this self-limiting nature and this layer by layer deposition, uh, we get very um, conformal films, um, really nice. Um, so here's the, our physical ALD system, our, our uh, chamber is up there at the top, and here's the software we use to uh, control it. Here we can see our precursors, um, our valves here, we can heat our precursors, we open our valves, they're carried by uh, an inert, just nitrogen <coughs> gas going into our reaction chamber, and it's all held in a, a rough vacuum by a rough <coughs> um, So uh, we're using uh, tetractus dimethylamine 10 uh, as a precursor, and we're depositing it on top of soda lime glass. Um, and so the parameters we can change um, are the pulse time, the substrate temperature, the precursor temperature, uh, which reactant we're using. So are we going to oxidize with water or ozone? And then the number of cycles to control the thickness. Um, and the target is to get a high transmission because uh, we don't want our buffer layer uh, to, to absorb light. That we want to go to the absorbing layer of the solar cell. Um, so a high transmission in the 400 to 8 nanometer range. A carrier concentration between 10 to the 17th and 10 to the 18th per cubic centimeter and a thickness of 50 to 100 nanometers. Um, and so far, uh, we're getting pretty nice transmissions. Um, here are a couple different ones we've taken. The top one actually has almost a 96 uh, average transmission between the 400 to 800 nanometers. We're getting a very low carrier concentration on the order of 10 to the 10th per cubic centimeter, so that's seven or eight orders of magnitude lower than we need it. Um, and other groups have also run into this problem 
uh, you, with, while using H2O as a reactant, um, and they've reported better results with ozone, and uh, so that's what we're currently going into. Um, so in the future, as I mentioned, we'll be using ozone um, instead of H2O and hoping that boosts our carrier concentration. Um, we might also uh, try out plasma-enhanced ALD, which basically allows us to use a, a lower substrate temperature because um, the, the energy necessary for the reaction comes from the plasma rather than <coughs> the thermal heat of the substrate. Um, and then on a completely different note, we might, uh, oh, we're going to try to uh, grow some tin sulfide um, to replace the cadmium telluride as an absorber and uh, see, see if that works. Um, so here's a couple of different things you can talk to me about that later if you're interested in the tin sulfide. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Powdell for all his help and mentorship. Um, also Dr. Jan and all the members of his research group. Uh, Dr. Irving for all his great uh, REU help. And of course Linda Obi, the administrative coordinator who does a lot of work to make this Yeah. So I was just wondering how thick your films were and how many cycles you need to get uh, to the thickness you desired initially. It was, yeah. yeah. Uh, we were doing 500 cycles um, and they were about 120 nanometers. Um, oh. So that, that's what. And uh, how long does the cycle take? A cycle, uh, so 500 cycles takes about an hour and a half. Oh. So the other question was just a, you had a slide talking about fixing cracks. Maybe you uh, can talk yes. about that. <laughs> yeah, so that's what the, okay, the tin sulfide, um, so why do we want tin sulfide is um, instead of cadmium telluride, it's, it's non-toxic, um, it's earth abundant and has a band gap that gives us, that, that has a higher theoretical efficiency than the cadmium telluride. Um, and we actually already make it in our group via closed space sublimation, um, but this requires a high temperature um, and the, the mismatched thermal expansion coefficients between the glass and the and sulfide uh, lead to cracking and cooling. Um, so because we could do a lower temperature, hopefully, with the ALD, um, we're, we're hoping on catching those pinholes via ALD, um, which will uh, reduce the shunting of the force. Yeah. Yes? Nothing to do with your work, but in basically your title, um, the first slide after the title, you said, um, you should explain you needed this uh, highly resistive layer. I mean, you have this wonderful transparent conducting oxide whose job is to be conducting, and now you're blocking it off from the from the junctions by putting this resistive oil. What's going on there? Right. Um, well, that's actually, um, I don't know enough of uh, physics, to be honest, to answer that question. Yeah. No. So the main goal of this is reducing the cadmium sulfide thickness, which has a lower band gap than the tin oxide. So cad sulfide is only 2.4 eV and tin oxide has 3.6 eV. And it can thin down the layer and allow more light going in the cat tail. So we would like to collect more blue photons in our device structure. All right. Well, let's thank Dylan again.